Did the CDC hide gun violence data, or was there something else involved? This is Alan with Quarter Horse Arms, and in this podcast, I want to talk about the CDC and um, beginning around the mid middle of December, some people started noticing gun data had or gun violence data had been taken off of the CDC site. So let's talk about that. Uh, if I get some dates wrong, um, I apologize in advance. So in the middle of December, um, the CDC did in fact pull some gun violence data off of their site. And in some aspect, they did accede to gun control advocates. I believe it was the GVA, the Gun Violence Archive. And one of the things everyone you know kind of worries about is oh it's the anti-gun people well yeah they were anti-gun uh there's no question about that um they are definitely for gun control and at first you kind of wonder who's bringing this up and one of the funny things i read in one of the articles while doing some background for this was it listed pro-gun republicans Um, I'm pretty sure not every Republican is pro-gun. And being a Democrat, I'm pretty sure not all of us are anti-gun. Case in point, I not only am a gun owner, I'm also a gun dealer. So there's enough of us out there, you know, that not everybody that's pro-gun is bad. Or Republican, for that matter. Okay, so... Where did the CDC go wrong? Well, for starters, when they met with the um, gun control advocates, and, and again, I'm pretty sure it was Gun Violence Archive, they didn't meet with all the stakeholders. Uh, quite frankly, that was their mistake, is they should have had some pro-gun organizations or Second Amendment organizations to discuss the data. And I'll get to the data in a second. Um, and how you determine the data gets funky too. Uh, and I'll get to that in a second too. Now the data that's in question showed something like um, between 60,000 and 2.5 million defensive gun events per year. Well, 60,000 is a huge number, and it's probably well within the realm of possibility since we're averaging 45, 50,000 um, gun deaths a year, or gun related deaths. Um, that number is, you know, reasonably plausible. In fact, it's probably significantly higher. Now, getting to 2.5 million, to me, that's where things don't work so well. And if you do anything with statistics, claiming the range is 60,000 to 2.5 million a year is just off the wall. Now, if you're in support of um, people owning and carrying guns, that number is great. And if you're a gun control advocate, you're going, holy crap, that's going to shoot us down. And they, they actually came in and said that they wanted the data suppressed and buried. Um, bad. Bad choice. Bad way to approach it. Um, now, here's where things also get weird. Now, when we talk about defensive gun events, we're not talking about shootings necessarily. I'm sure some of them are. Um, some of them might be, you know, hey, someone's trying to break into your house and you kind of rap on the window with your pistol to encourage them to go elsewhere. That would still count as a defensive gun event. Um, what did the study show? Well, even by the researcher who conducted the study who said the sample size is too small the data is inaccurate it's not a great study and 
for that matter, I can support taking that down if the data is bad data. Um, it shouldn't be out there. Now, the question becomes, do you believe it's bad data or not? Um, I can't make that decision for you, but two and a half million times a year is way too much. And how are you going to prove that? Because if the guy's statistics um, are accurate and you're using a small sample size, your chance of error is massive. Do I believe there's a lot of people that have... Ha excuse me. Are there a lot of people that have to draw a gun potentially to defend themselves? Absolutely. Should they have the right to have the gun to defend themselves? In my opinion, absolutely. Um, and for, if you're a gun control advocate, you know, if people are really claiming two and a half million times a year, people are drawing guns to defend themselves. Well, you're making a case that says we don't need gun control. We need more guns out there. Okay, so the other thing that crops up is when you start looking at mass shootings. Some places label it as four or more people being killed. Some of them label it four or more people injured. So there is a discrepancy. Um, and in point of fact, looking at the data that came out of the gun violence archive, they can't even tell you exactly how many people died. They have it broken down by um, shootings and deaths, but then when you get to teens, their data, you know, their own data is skewed. They list it as shot or killed. Um, and they have not been able to, in the most recent um, table I saw, they were not able to say how many people committed suicide using a firearm. And admittedly, that number is high. There are more people killing themselves um, with guns than are being killed by guns. Well, you know, I guess you could argue they're being killed by guns too. But people being shot by somebody else, the number is... I think, lower than the number of people committing suicide. But maybe I got my numbers wrong. Who cares? However, the way, you're, the way people are looking at it is kind of like global warming. Prior to President Trump, there was global warming. After President Trump, there's global warming. During President Trump's uh, presidency, um, he said there was no global warming. Well, if you take the same thing with the CDC going, okay, well, there's a lot of gun violence. Well, let's get rid of the data. Okay, so now there's not so much gun violence. Who do you believe? Um, in, in my mind, as a science person, data is data. Bad data is still data. So do I think in that particular case the study should have been removed? The answer is yes. If the guy conducting the study said it's bad data and the study was too small or really doesn't show anything, then you probably shouldn't have published it in the first place. Now, let's talk about that part of it. One of the things that you have to keep in mind, and, and this is where we get into a very, very hazy uh, patch of ground. Um, in 1996, the Dickey Amendment um, specifically barred the CDC from doing any kind of gun violence research. They were saying no federal funds could be used for it. Then in 2011, they expanded that to also bar the National Institutes of Health. So now we have places that can't do research whose job is to actually get that information. And then we go to uh, 2018, which is now after um, some of the school shootings. And actually during, um, actually started in President Obama's uh, terms in office, where after one round of school shootings, he goes, we really need to look at this. Well, nothing happened. Um, then around 2018... 
um, government said, well, you know, you're not supposed to spend federal funds on looking at gun violence, but you can look at some anyway. So we've gone essentially well over 20 years without, being, without the government actually being able to conduct research studies. So you're going to go, well, Alan, where the hell do I go to get my information? Well, it's a funny thing you should ask. Okay, so where can I go? Well, one good place would be Journal of American uh, Journal of the American Medical Association. They actually have some data and they're looking at fatalities. Um, one of the first studies done, and I forgot the year, you know, meaning after they were told they could, you know, spend a little money and go do some research, uh, was on urban violence. The uh, JAMA, Journal of American Medical Association, um, did, it, did a much more comprehensive study, but it doesn't answer the question people are looking for, is do guns prevent crimes? And then you have to start looking at Okay, well, what kind of crimes? And it's weird, and I know I'm saying this a lot, but when you start looking at the information, um, the one thing that for sure is up, besides people getting shot, is um, domestic gun violence is up. So it turns out that some of the data actually shows that if there's a gun in the house and a domestic dispute occurs there's a better chance of somebody actually getting their, uh, getting shot in the process. Um, which in turn was, you know, some of the things for the red flag laws, which feel free to check one of my other podcasts on that. So to kind of quickly summarize, well, not so quickly summarize, am I an apologist for the CDC? Absolutely not. Do I think they stepped over the line by only including gun control advocates? Yeah, I did. However, I'm kind of siding with the guy that conducted the study that said, you know, you can't really draw any conclusions from this study because it's not a good study. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to actually do studies. And the studies have to be if not bipartisan, they have to be um, fair and well-designed studies. Now, is the Dickey Amendment still in place? It is. They're just trying to find a way to skirt around it so people can actually get usable data. Now, when it comes to stuff like that, are there people that are not going to be happy with the results? Yes, there are. Are there people that are going to be ecstatic about the results? I'm sure there are. I think it's more likely that both sides are going to both walk away a little happy and a little not so happy. And I know this is kind of a weird thing. Um, however, in this case, I'm not entirely convinced. In fact, I'm not convinced at all that removing the data was bad. I think that people trying to use that data to justify less gun control at best is questionable. And make no mistake, I mean, I am a gun dealer. I have guns. So I am certainly not a gun control advocate by any means. Um, I just don't like people skewing things giving them a slant using bad data. So that's it for today's rant. This is Alan with Quarter Horse Arms. And number is 919-808-6480. You, that's for calling or text. You can email to info at quarterhorsearms.com. And the website is quarterhorsearms.com. You guys have a great night, and I hope you'll listen to the next podcast.